Hello everyone and welcome back to Back to History. In today's video, we'll be looking at mentally ill European monarchs. Note that I won't cover all monarchs in this video, so if you're interested in the second part, hit that thumbs up button. And without further ado, we're jumping right into the video. Charles VI was born in 1368 to the then King Charles V of France and his mother Joanna of Bourbon. He ascended the throne at only 11 years old. Since he was a minor, his uncles took up as regents until he was 21. One of his first acts was to restore the power of his advisors who also served his father during his reign. They ushered France into a new period of high esteem which resulted in Charles getting the nickname The Beloved. After first success with his new counselors, Charles then in his mid-twenties experienced his first stages of psychosis. Mental illness may have been passed on through several generations through his mother, Joanna of Bourbon. From then on, he was also known as Charles the Mad. His first episode occurred in 1392 when his friend Oliver de Clisson was the victim of an attempted murder. He survived, but Charles was determined to punish the would-be assassin who had taken refuge in Brittany. When the Duke of Brittany was unwilling to hand him out, he prepared a military expedition. Charles was in a fever to begin the expedition and set off with an army on July 1, 1392. The progress is slow, driving Charles into a frenzy in patience. Periods of mental illness followed throughout his life. During one, in 1393, he couldn't remember his name, nor did he know that he was the king. Further, he did not recognize his wife anymore. During another period, in 1395 to 1396, he claimed to be St. George. At this time, he still could not recognize his wife, nor his children. The king sometimes ran wildly to the corridor of his residence so that entrances had to be walled up to keep him inside. In 1405, he refused to bath or change his clothes for five months. Later psychotic episodes were not described in detail anymore, perhaps because of the similarity of his behavior and delusions. From writings of Pope Pius we know that Charles had times where he thought he was made out of glass and thus tried to protect himself so he would not break. This condition is known as glass delusion. Charles would go on to suffer psychotic episodes until he died on October 21st, 1422. Eric XIV was the eldest son of King Gustav I of Sweden and became king in 1560 upon the death of his father. As a young man, he was described as very successful in foreign languages and math. He was also an excellent historian, a good writer, and familiar with astrology. Against his father's will, he entered marriage negotiations with the future Queen Elizabeth I of England, Mary Queen of Scots, Renata of Lorraine, Anna of Saxony, and Christine of Hesse. But as we all know how history went, all of his proposals were unsuccessful. Eric was crowned King of Sweden on the 29th of June 1561. At the beginning of his reign, he was regarded as intelligent, artistically skilled, and politically ambitious. However, it is claimed that around this time he started showing signs of mental instability, a condition that eventually led to insanity. From 1563 onwards, his insanity became worse. His rule was more than ever being marked by violence. He became suspicious of nobility, especially the noble Stur family. He mostly distrusted Svante Stensenstur, whose son Niels he accused of treason in 1566. He later dropped the charge and sent Niels to Lorraine to arrange his marriage to Renata of Lorraine, but in the meantime, he fixed on his mistress, Karen Mann's daughter, as his wife. Niels returned in 1567 and still on suspicion of high treason, Eric ordered his guards to kill several members of the Stur family and he himself stabbed Niels to death. With Eric's insanity getting worse in 1568, the dukes and nobles rebelled which led to his imprisonment by his brother, Duke John. John took on power in September that year and Eric was dethroned in January 1569. Eric was in prison for the next seven years until he died of a poisoned pea soup, which was ordered by his brother John. His body was exhumed in 1958 and modern forensic confirmed that Eric most likely died of arsenic poisoning. The daughter of Joseph I of Portugal and Mariana Victoria of Spain, Maria was born on the 17th of December 1734. She became Queen of Portugal and later Brazil and was known as Maria de Mad. Upon the death of her father on February 24th, 1777, Maria became the first undisputed Queen Regnant of Portugal. Maria was considered a good ruler at the beginning of her reign. She showed first signs of madness in 1786 when she had to be carried back to her apartment in a state of delirium. Her husband died in May that year and her mental state became increasingly worse. After the death of her husband, she forbade any court entertainments. On September 11, 1788, her eldest son, Prince Jose, died of smallpox. These deaths may have resulted in Queen Maria developing a major depressive disorder. 
Another potential cause could have been her ancestor's ancestry since two of her sisters had similar conditions. In February 1792, Maria was deemed mentally insane and was treated by Francis Willis, the same physician that treated King George III of Britain. He deemed her incurable and so Maria's second eldest son took over the government. During the Peninsular War in 1807, Napoleonic forces invaded Portugal and the Portuguese royal family was forced to flee to Brazil. During the transfer to Brazil, the queen was heard screaming heavily and her dementia was so great at that point that she feared that she was going to be tortured or robbed by her servants. Maria died at age 81 after living in Brazil for 8 years. Despite her illness, she is admired as key figure in the independence of Brazil. These were three monarchs that suffered from mental illness throughout their lives. I make videos all around historical people, mostly royals, so if you enjoy this kind of content, please make sure to subscribe to my channel for weekly videos. See you next week at Back to History.